Welcome to KNN. KNN is brought to you by Bob Knackle, Chairman of New York Investment Sales at JLL. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hageman, Managing Director at JLL. Welcome to KNN. Today I'm here with Bob Knackle, Chairman of New York Investment Sales. And today we're going to talk about foreign investment in the New York City real estate market. So Bob, it's a topic that we talk about quite a bit with clients of ours when they ask what's happening with foreign investment and the belief among many folks is that over the last year in particular, direct foreign investment into real estate is down significantly. Can you shed some light on this? Well, Hags, you're right. Everybody wants to know about foreign investment. And last year, foreign investment was down in the New York City investment sales market. Um, however, it's down because we're comparing it to 2015, 16, and 17, when there was an unprecedented amount of foreign investment that came into the market. Chinese investors, particularly the Chinese institutions, were extraordinarily active during that period of time. and really ran up the, the numbers in aggregate dollars and the percentages that foreign investors were deploying capital into the marketplace. So on a relative basis, folks are right. Uh, on an absolute basis, I don't know if there's all that much reason to be concerned. So Bob, you specifically mentioned China and how they've decreased the amount of investment they've made. And there's been a number of times that we've talked about there's different countries over different periods of time that have been the lead investor. Why don't you give some perspective on maybe who those countries have been over the last 30 plus years? Yeah, Hags, absolutely. It's, it's always been, you know, people get very excited about the uh, foreign investor of the, the sure. month, kind of. Um, and then when that investor leaves the market, there's great concern. But going back to 1984, when I started at that particular time, Japan was by far the most prominent foreign investor in the marketplace. In fact, it was a lot of foreign investment in the late 70s that led to the creation of FERPTA to make sure that we were getting paid taxes from foreigners who were, were selling properties here. Mm -hmm. but. Japan was the dominant investor then, and then we went through a period of time where Germany was producing the most foreign investors in the market. At one time, Ireland was the, the most dominant foreign investor in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And of late, yes, absolutely, China has been the, the origin of the most amount of capital that's come through the market that inflated the numbers with respect to right. what was deployed during that 2015 to 17 period. But it's also important to note that although it's not spoken about that much, Canada is actually the country that has produced the most foreign investment over the longest period of time consistently. And while China overtook Canada for a year or two uh, during that, that period I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, they have been, are, and probably will continue to be the most dominant foreign investor on a consistent basis in our market. So Bob, why don't we get into some of the specifics as it, and quantify it as we, as we like to do. What, what percentage are we talking about here as it relates to foreign investment in the market? Is it 20%? Is it 80%? How do the numbers break out? Okay, well, it depends on the period of time. If we look at 2007 to 2014, during that period of time, foreign investment made up about 16% of total investment in the market. And in the average year during that period, there was about $3.9 billion of foreign investment made. If we fast forward to 2015 to 2017, we see that that percentage increased to an average of 42% wow. during those years, and the average amount of capital invested was about $17.6 billion, so it really swelled quite a bit. So now that we've set the table on a relative basis, what did 2018 look like? Well, I think if you look at the 18 numbers, and this is the perception that folks have is that foreign investment is way down because mm -hmm. the big foreign institutions are not as obvious as they were previously. However, the aggregate dollars that were invested still was 6.2 billion, which was well above that 2007 and 2014 average. So that's why I said if you look at the relative numbers, the relative numbers are down, but the absolute numbers are very, very good. So Bob, you mentioned that Chinese investment recently is down significantly. You also mentioned Canada and Japan. You know, who, who's picked up the slack for them now that China's down? Right. Well, if you look at the, uh, the percentage of all foreign investment that came from China, especially during that period of 2015 mm -hmm. through the first half of 2017, 
we see that, that China produced about 32% of all the foreign capital that came in. And in the second half of 17 through 18, that dropped to just 2%. Wow. Now, conversely, if we look at how active investors from Japan have been, we've seen that during that, that former period, Japanese investment was only 3% of the market, and it increased from the second half of 17 through 18, it's now 17% of the market. So that was a very, very big switch. It was as if uh, Japan stepped in and picked up the reins for, for Chinese investors. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at Canada, old reliable Canada represented 24% of foreign investment during that 2015 to the first half of 17 period and 25% in the latter period. So Canada remains very, very steady, very active in the market, and we expect that to continue. So, Bob, you mentioned FERPTA in this episode, and legislation is something that we always like to talk about. Why don't you tell the audience what's on tap for the next episode? Well, next week we're going to talk about something called commercial rent control and how that might impact our local New York investment sales market in the future. Mm -hmm.